In this video tutorial for Grand Prix Race Manager, we will cover Step 8, which is creating race schedules. In this video we will only be covering the built-in race schedulers. In a separate video we will cover manual schedule creation and importing schedules. This tutorial is using version 22 of the software. However, much of what we will cover applies to other versions of Grand Prix Race Manager. On the overview tab of the main screen, click on the shortcut button for Step 8. This takes us to the Schedules tab. Note, the columns displayed on this tab are affected by what you have set in the Software Settings screen. There are also some features that are only available in the Pro version of the software. Once you've completed checking in the racers for a group, you can go ahead and create a schedule for that group. To create a schedule, first select the group from the list on the left for the current round. Then over on the right, select the scheduling method that you want to use. The software has three built-in schedulers. Perfect N-type schedules will make sure that every racer runs down each lane of the track, all racers will run the same number of times, and racers will face a variety of opponents. Lane rotation schedules are similar, but are not as good at having racers face a variety of opponents. Dynamic scheduling aims to have as many racers as possible win a heat. As racing progresses, the slower racers will race against other slower racers and faster racers against other faster racers. Each of these schedulers does have their pros and cons. Those are covered in the software's help file. To the right of the scheduled button there is a wizard button. This wizard can help you by recommending a scheduling method to use based on the settings that you have set and the number of racers in the selected group. It lists the factors which affects the recommendation. These are the number of racers in the selected race group, if a timer will be used with the software, what scoring method will be used, and the number of track lanes. The wizard also needs to know if each racer will run down each lane of the track that will be in use for the race. We do recommend having racers go down each lane of the track, so no one can complain that they didn't win a trophy because they ran in the quote-unquote bad lane. If each racer goes down each lane of the track, then they all face that supposed bad lane. For this demonstration, I will select yes and then click on the next button. Based on those parameters, the software will provide a list of suitable scheduling methods. It will also provide a list of scheduling methods that it does not recommend. You can use this information to select the scheduling method that you will use. Once you've determined a scheduling method, select it and then click on the Schedule button. For this first group, I will generate a perfect N-type schedule. If you have any racers in that group that have not passed inspection, the software will warn you about that. If any of those racers should have been passed, you can go back to the Registration tab to fix that issue, otherwise, click on the Yes button. We recommend doing a count of the vehicles on the staging table and comparing that to the number of racers that are passed in the software for that group. If there is a discrepancy, make sure to resolve it before you build the schedule. You do not want to leave a racer off of the schedule that should have been included. This is a good check to prevent that from happening. This scheduler shows you the number of track lanes, the race group, and the number of racers that have passed inspection for that group. You can specify how many runs down each lane of the track you want each racer to do. If you click on the Advanced button, there are some extra options that you can set for the scheduler. These are explained in the software's help file. Now, click on the Generate button. The scheduler has generated a schedule, which you can see here. Here we have 9 racers running once per lane, so the scheduler has made 9 heats. If they were running twice per lane, it would have given a schedule with 18 heats. If the scheduler was not able to create a schedule, you can try to manually increase the number of past racers. Any extra racers will be added as a buy to the schedule, which just means that lane will be empty for the applicable heats. The scheduler has given us an estimate of how much time it will take for the race crew to run this schedule. You can adjust the time per heat setting based on how efficient your race crew is. A really efficient crew can crank out heats in 45 seconds or less. Clicking on the Lane Use button will display how many times each racer will run in each lane of the track. 
As you can see, each racer is running down each lane of the track once, since I have the scheduler set to one run per lane. Clicking on the opponent's button will display what opponents each racer will face and how many times. For this schedule, each racer faces a good number of opponents and faces them pretty equally. The export button is there if you want to export this schedule as a CSV file. The only reason that you would want to do this is to help you create a custom schedule that you can then import into the software. Note, the export feature is a pro version only feature. For help on this particular scheduler, click on the help button. If you are happy with this schedule, click on the save button. On the schedules tab, you can see the schedule that was just created. The software is currently set to show the schedules with the racer names and their vehicle numbers. You can also see a nag message that asks if you want to view the schedule matrix report. If you click on the yes button, the software will go through the process of generating the, the schedule matrix report for you to view and print. You can click on the no button to skip that report. Note, if you don't want to see this nag message again, you can click on the box on the left. Now, let's create a lane rotation schedule for our next group. But first, I'll make a change in the software settings screen to only display the vehicle numbers in the schedule. You now see that schedule with just the vehicle numbers. Select the race group from the left to create the schedule for that group. Select lane rotation from the right and click on the schedule button. With this scheduler, you also see the number of lanes, the group, number of past racers, and you can specify the number of runs per lane. This scheduler can actually generate several different kinds of lane rotation schedules. I'll first generate a normal lane rotation schedule. The normal lane rotation method takes the first set of racers for the first heat. For the next heat, the racers are shifted over a lane. One racer will be dropped out and the next racer brought in. The rotation is kept up until all racers have raced in each lane. Racers pretty much face the same opponents over and over. Racers also run their heats consecutively, so most are done quickly. If you click on the advanced button, there is an extra option that you can set, if you like. Clicking on the lane use button, you can see that each racer runs down each lane of the track once. Clicking on the opponent's button, you can see that each racer runs against some racers far more than other racers. Next, I'll generate a modified lane rotation schedule. These schedules allow each racer to race once before the lane assignments are then rotated. This makes sure that racers don't just race in back-to-back -back heats and are done, like with normal and clustered lane rotation schedules. Clicking on the lane use button, you can see that each racer runs down each lane of the track once. Clicking on the opponent's button, you can see that each racer runs against some racers far more than other racers. Now for a clustered lane rotation schedule. These schedules will take a set of racers and rotate them through each of the lanes until they have raced in every lane. The next set of racers will then do the same thing. This will continue until all racers have raced in each lane. Racers face the same opponents over and over and run their heats consecutively. Note, the buys on the schedule just denote an empty lane. If you prefer, you could have some slow vehicle handy from a previous year's race to run in those slots. The software will ignore that lane for those heats, so no results will get recorded for that dummy vehicle. Clicking on the lane use button, you can see that each racer runs down each lane of the track once. Clicking on the opponent's button, you can see that each racer runs against the same set of opponents. Lastly, I'll generate a phase shifted schedule. These schedules are basically regular lane rotation schedules, but a phase shift has been applied to the assignments for lanes 2 and on. Clicking on the lane use button, you can see that each racer runs down each lane of the track once. Clicking on the opponent's button, you can see that the shifting has greatly improved the number of opponents that each racer will face. 
Of these four types of lane rotation schedules, we typically recommend using the phase shifted type, as it provides the best opponent mix for each racer. As with the perfect end type scheduler, you can get time estimates. There is also an export feature if you have the pro version of the software. For help on this particular scheduler, click on the help button. Click on the save button to create the schedule. Now, we will create a dynamic schedule. Select the race group on the left, the scheduling method on the right, and then click on the schedule button. With this scheduler, you also see the number of lanes, the group, and the number of past racers. Dynamic schedules are built in phases. Each phase is everyone in the group running down the track just once. Now, click on the Generate button. This generator will only build the first phase of the schedule. In the first phase, racers are randomly assigned to a heat in the lane. You will run each of the heats in the first phase using the racing screen. Once the first phase is complete, the software will ask you if you want to create another phase. If so, that new phase will be created and you can continue on with racing. All of this is while you are in the racing screen. Note, for the second phase and onward, who racers go head to head against will be based on how the racers did in the previous phases. The whole goal of the method is to maximize the number of racers to win at least one heat. As you run more phases, slower racers end up racing against other slower racers and faster racers against other fast racers. So, competition will look tighter than it really is. Note, a big disadvantage to dynamic scheduling is that it cannot guarantee that each racer will run down each lane of the track. It will do its best to do so, assuming that you run enough phases, however, it cannot guarantee it. If it comes down to two racers that haven't run in a particular lane, only one can be scheduled into that lane. You can run as many phases as you want. However, it is recommended to run at least as many phases as you have track lanes. This scheduler will give you a time estimate based on the number of phases that you want to run. For help on this particular scheduler, click on the Help button. Click on the Save button to create the schedule. Once you create a schedule using one of the first three schedulers, you will see the quick schedule create box displayed. You can use this to quickly make a schedule using the exact same options, like number of runs per lane and advanced settings, as you used previously, without having to go back through the schedule generator screen. The schedules tab has a few other features. Selecting a group from the list on the left will display the schedule for that group, if you have created one. Then you can use the lane use or opponent's buttons to see more information on that schedule, just like you saw earlier when generating a schedule. Clicking on the time estimate button will show you how much time is estimated to run each of the schedules that you have created, as well as the total time. You can adjust the average time per heat, if needed, and then calculate the new time estimates. Close this screen when done. If you need to delete a schedule, click on the Delete button on the top toolbar of the main screen. Select the Schedule option. Select the group whose schedule you want to delete, or select the All option to delete out all schedules. Click on the OK button. Confirm the deletion by typing YES in all capital letters. If you want the software to first make a backup of your data file, make sure that the Backup Data First box is checked. Up to now, the master schedule feature has been turned off. I will go to the software settings screen and turn that on to show you how that affects the schedules. If you click on the round number on the left, you can see the master schedule for that round. The software has taken the schedules that were created and collated them together into a single schedule. You can see here the alternation of the different race groups. You can still view a group's own schedule by selecting the group from the list on the left. Note, Master Scheduling is a pro version only feature. However, Master Scheduling does not support dynamic schedules. Over in the Schedules data section, it will give you some handy totals based on which race group that you have selected. This section also allows you to import a race schedule for the selected group or to export the displayed schedule. 
Note, importing and exporting schedules is a pro version only feature and will be covered in the next video tutorial. Lastly, there is a search feature on this tab. You can use that to find which heats a particular racer is scheduled for. For more information on scheduling, you can click on the small help button. Now let's go back to the overview tab by clicking on the home button. If you have created a schedule for each of your race groups, the completed box for step 8 will have been automatically checked for you, otherwise, you can go ahead and check this step as completed when you are done. This completes our video for step 8 create race schedules using the built-in schedule generators. We will be doing a separate video for manual scheduling and importing custom schedules. Otherwise, stay tuned for our video for step 9, where we will cover running the race.